Mayoral candidate Ethan Berkowitz, thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. 25 years in Alaska. Um, why are you running for mayor now? You've, you've had a lot of uh, you've had experience in the legislature and you've run for a number of other offices, but mm -hmm. uh, now mayor, why? I've been here in Anchorage for 25 years now. We have two kids, they're both in the schools, and this is an exciting time to be running for mayor. The state's not in a position where it can help the city do the things the city needs to do. The federal government is sort of hostile to where Alaska is at this point. And so if anything's going to happen about making our future the kind of place we want it to be, now's the time and this is the place. Some of the issues, the economy, is that something that you're, you're worried about? Well, I'm not worried about it. I'm actually quite excited about the opportunities that are coming our way. We've got a little bit of a bumpy stretch ahead as we figure out how to transition through the state's very difficult budgetary situation. But if you look at where Anchorage is, geographically in the world, you look at where our, our people are poised to go, there's tremendous opportunities in front of us. We just have to have the vision to go out and get them. What are some of the visions that you do have for Anchorage in terms of helping to sustain and also build our economy? Well, I mean, the, the first and most immediate challenge is to do the transition that the state is going to need to do as it downsizes. Because as the state downsizes, what it's really going to do is shift responsibilities to local government onto Anchorage. And so we need to accommodate some of the responsibilities, like uh, the police are going to have to ramp up as the troopers scale down. And so some of these things are going to have to take place. But economically, we're in a great position to, to benefit from our air cargo, from our value add to some of, say, our, our salmon industry, uh, do some light manufacturing. In, in terms of more development in the Arctic, that's all going to happen here. And the opening of the Arctic, Anchorage should be the gateway to that. I want to explore that issue a little bit more because um, Anchorage is seen sort of as the bedroom community for some of the wider um, economic opportunities that the state prospers from, mm -hmm. um, oil being one. So as mayor, how important is it for you to sort of be building relationships and helping to foster our exploration in the Arctic, for example? Is that something that you... Care about? Look, Anchorage is in Alaska. It's Anchorage, comma, Alaska. We're all part of it together. And, and I think the, the more that we, Anchorage can help Alaska develop our resources, the better off we're going to be, the more prosperous we're going to be, the more opportunities we're going to have. So as mayor, the relationships I have, say, with the, at the federal delegation, with, with uh, people in industry, people in the state legislature, the governor, all those relationships will help. But really, the relationships that matter most for the mayor are the people of this town. And the people of this town have a tremendous untapped capacity to do a lot more than we have been doing. And if we approach these next years as a time to just hunker down and not be aggressive and not be ambitious, then we're not really going to be in a position where we can take advantage of all the opportunities that are coming our way. Can you be more specific maybe with conversations you've had with people in the community coming mm -hmm. to you now that they know you're running for mayor um, as to what opportunities they want you to open up to them here in Anchorage? I mean, some of them, there's, there's various layers of it. One of the more exciting layers is what can we do to make Anchorage a, a more fun, more exciting place to live? And some of that's making sure that there's available housing for folks, that, that uh, we can make this a safer, more secure community. Um, some of it has to do with bringing more broadband into Anchorage. I mean, we're at, at a fairly low broadband capacity in Anchorage compared to where they are globally. And as Anchorage is in a unique position to benefit from the global economy, we need to have the infrastructure to be able to do that. So that's good broadband. It's also we need to make it, take advantage of the, the local energy resources here, the gas and Cook Inlet, the wind, the tidal, the geothermal. All these uh, offer a potential for us to grow. And we can do that in conjunction with building our schools together. Mm -hmm. The schools need to work with the university. There's a lot of pieces of this puzzle. And I've just been very excited about putting the puzzle together in a way that the future looks e even brighter than it has so far. How do you feel the city is being run at the moment? And would you change anything? We're in a stable situation right now. And stable to me means there's a platform for more growth. Um, I, I think we need to have an ambition and a vision of where we want to go. And my vision for Anchorage is one I think that most of my neighbors share when I talk to people when I go shopping at Costco or when I go out to dinner or when I pick up kids at the school, is people want this to be a safe community, a secure community, and a strong community. And that's the immediate vision I have. But we, we ought to have ambition so that our universities can be robust, our schools from kindergarten 
through 12th, and also pre-K, vocational and technical, all these things have to happen. And Anchorage is really sort of the gateway to the rest of Alaska. Our workforce development here can be phenomenal. 30% of the jobs in the North Slope don't go to people who live in Alaska. We train more people, we'll fill more jobs. You mentioned the ASD a couple of times um, already, so do you want to talk more about our public education system? You said you have two kids um, at in the public education system. I do. Are you happy with the way things are being run? Um, I, I think that they've had the benefit of a terrific education and I'm a big fan of what um, the school district does. I, I hope we can do more. I hope we can offer more choices to more people. I hope we can provide a greater quality of education. Some of the, the entryway to education pre-kindergarten, it's a proven indic indicator of success. It's a proven pathway to success in schools. Alaska is one of a half dozen states that doesn't have universally available pre-K. Well, I think that Anchorage has the ability to sort of set the, set the table so we can do pre-K. Anchorage, for example, has rec centers. We have schools that are not completely being used. Those are facilities that the city can offer so it makes it easier for pre-K to be offered. Um, I also think that in terms of, of uh, workforce development, particularly vocational and technical training, we need to, to increase our capacity in that regard. There are a lot of things that can happen, specific ideas. A lot of task forces have studied this. There's a lot of papers that are sitting on shelves. And frankly, if we just dusted them off and used them, we'd be in great shape. To, 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 I mean, I'm sorry for but too much of, of, of what we don't do happens because there's inertia. It, we're, there's no movement. And I'm a big believer is we just need to start moving. And the more we move, the easier it'll be to get somewhere. Are you worried about costs of these visions that you have? I, I'm more worried about the cost of not doing things because the cost of, of standing still are going to far exceed it. How are we going to pay for them? It's going to take a little bit of creativity. There's places where we can find efficiencies in local government. Um, Do you want to talk to that? Is there somewhere where at the moment you see the government is spending where they don't need to be or cuts that need to be made that you would advocate for? Sure, and it's not, it's not just cuts, it's more efficiency. We worry a lot with, with running government that we're talking about the inputs, how much money is going in. We need to focus on the results. Um, you know, the, in terms of a specific, there's 20,000 light poles in Anchorage. We put LED lights on 5,000 of them. Those LEDs, those 5,000 save about $2 million a year in annual cost. Let's put LEDs in the other 15,000, that's another six million bucks. There was an, an old uh, uh, program that we had called Ariba, which we use for our procurement system, which saved this, the city about 10 or 20 million dollars a year. Let's bring that back. I mean, there's a lot of low hanging fruit here. There's energy efficiency in, the, in municipally owned buildings. There's about 180 buildings, not counting school districts. I mean, we can save a lot of money that way. We need to expand the tax base, um, and, and we need to be a little bit more creative with, with uh, allowing public-private partnerships to occur and taking down some of the barriers that prevent private money to flow into public infrastructure. When you say expanding the tax base, do you want to talk about that a little bit more? Sure. You build more houses, you'll have more taxpayers. As simple as that. And, and some of the reasons why we don't have enough housing in this town, these are problems that government has created and government can take down. It's a little bit like Ronald Reagan going to Mr. Gorbachev and saying, Mr. Gorbachev, take down that wall. Well, I, I'd like to go to some of those government-erected barriers and just take them down. At the local level, as, as mayor, you could do that in terms of what per permitting and the coding and, and things like that that might be getting in the way. Some of the problems that you have with the permitting situation, and I've helped develop projects, and it's really frustrating. You go to City Hall and you're told one thing, and someone comes out on site and tells you something else, and, and your crew sits around all day waiting to get an answer. But if you, if it, a lot of times the folks who work for the city are bound by rules that are frankly ridiculous and don't make sense to them, but they've got to follow those rules. And we need to inject a measure of discretion. I mean, the, 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 at the planning level, at the permitting level that we haven't done before, it needs to be done with some checks and balances, but you have that kind of flexibility. You, you work in a more cooperative way with the folks that are doing the building, that are doing the developing, and there's a clear pathway to getting things done. There's, there's the, the idea is that, we're, there, that it's hard to acquire capital, hard, hard to get the money that's necessary. We ought to solve that problem. We ought to be recognizing that at a national level, there's a reason why interest rates are so low. The, the Fed is lowing, lowering them in order to encourage investment. And that means it's a good time for us to bond. Money is cheap. Um, the, this will help us build a bridge through to a more secure state fiscal situation. 
you uh, brought up support for the private sector and, and what kind of things would you do? Uh, do you have a background that you can talk to us about mm -hmm. in terms of small business and support for that in Anchorage? Yeah, I mean, the small, the small business, I've done real estate, I've done restaurants here. Um, I've worked on some a broadband project uh, and I worked on a, a a renewable energy project, a geothermal project outside of Nome, and those experiences are, shape my view on how things are and how things can be, and the importance of, of doing public-private partnerships, and the importance of streamlining the government regulatory function. I mean, just tell me what the rules are and be consistent with the application of those rules, and I can invest and act accordingly. It's when things are variable, when they're capricious, that it's very difficult for the private sector to respond. Public safety is another big issue. Mm -hmm. um, do you have concerns about that in Anchorage as it stands right now? Sure. I mean, I, I cut my teeth as a prosecutor up here. I spent two years pretty much doing every bail hearing and every arraignment that was, was done in town. And a lot of ways, we're in a reactive policing mode. And at its best, policing is a proactive notion. I've subscribed to the idea that you need to link prevention, policing, and prosecution. And we need to do things at the prevention level. We need to make sure there's community policing. I'd love to, to bring back the old, um, they used to have a domestic violence knock, and sort of a knock and talk uh, unit that went and, and knocked on the doors of everybody who had a restraining order to make sure that folks were complying with those orders. That reduced the incidence of domestic violence by about 50% for those households. That, that's a significant thing. I'd like to make sure that we're not expending police resources picking up inebriants when there are other ways of perhaps solving those problems. You know, these are not new ideas. I mean, I'm not saying that these, I, I generated them at all. There's, there's str strategic plans in place that aren't being followed. And how do you implement them then? I mean, that's, we've been talking about community policing and, and as you said, it's not a new idea, but the police force does not, they don't have the resources to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so how can you step in as, as mayor if you're elected and, and help facilitate that? Well, some of it is you got to acquire, you just need to put more cops on the beat, more, more police on the street. I mean, the most, you need a visible, effective police force. And, and some of that is you, you need to find different ways of financing it. There's a, a very interesting financing mechanism called pay, per, pay for performance bonding, where in essence you get the private sector to help fund some of the costs of, of doing these, these sort of social programs. And the reason why the private sector would be interested in doing it is it saves costs. I mean, the, the externalities, the, the hidden costs of crime are significant. And if you reduce crime, if you make sure that people feel safe and secure, then what you do is you increase productivity, you increase the, the sense of freedom and liberty that people have, you make it a more prosperous community. And the markets will recognize that if you find the right mechanism for them to invest that accordingly. Do you think we're headed on the wrong track in terms of public safety at the moment and the Anchorage Police Department? I think the notion that you can do more with less is misguided. And in, if we really want to do more in terms of public safety, we need to make sure that we have that we have the right number of officers on the street and that we're enforcing the right kind of criminal or enforcing against the right kind of criminal behavior. But a police force is part of the community. It's not apart from us, it is a part of us. And uh, we need to do a lot more to, to rebuild morale in the police department and make sure that, the, that not just the officers, but the support team, the dispatchers, know that their work is valued and, and we need to treat them accordingly. What are your other visions, if you're elected as mayor, that you would like to, to take Anchorage towards? Well, I, I mean, I have these, these ideas. We, we're the gateway to the Arctic. Um, we ought to have a climate action plan in place. And those plans exist. We, we ought to be, have the ambition of being far more energy efficient than we are. That's we, something that you seem to be passionate about in terms of ener energy efficiency. You've, been, you've worked on projects I, I've worked related on projects to that. Because and the energy is a baseline piece of infrastructure. If you can reduce the cost of energy, then you increase the opportunities. I mean, doing any kind of business deal involves an element of risk. And part of the risk is assessing the cost. And if you can reduce the cost, the fixed costs associated with energy, mm -hmm. you increase the capacity of people to take risk. And, and without risk, we wouldn't be the country we are. I mean, as Alaskans, we pride ourselves in being independent and self-reliant people. And that requires a certain element of risk taking. That's inherent in our character. And we can let that character flourish a little bit more by re reducing some of those fixed costs.
Would you support um, the Kinnick Arm Bridge for, uh, in terms of an, a solution to our housing problem? No, I, I don't think it's a solution to our housing problem. Um, I, I think you also have to look at the tight fiscal times that we're in and recognize that why are we going to start paying for a project without knowing how we're going to finish paying for it? Why would we embark on something like that without knowing where operation and maintenance money is going to come from? Mm. So, you know, you don't even have to get to the merits of this particular proposal. I think all these proposals need to be assessed with that sort of fiscal discipline, that kind of rigor, which mm. is how are you going to pay for it from soup to nuts? Where, where's all the money going to come from? And then once you get it constructed, who's going to operate it and maintain it, and how much is that going to cost? So th these are cost-benefit have you thought about who you would like to work with within the city government in terms of a manager, city manager? I, I haven't gone that far down the road, but just as a man, in terms of my leadership style, I like to surround myself with people who are smart, people who are innovative, um, folks who are unafraid to try something new. And I've always felt that if you put a critical mass of critical thinkers in a confined space, there's no telling what you can come up with. Just finally, I want to hear who are your biggest supporters? Uh, my family, my two kids and my wife, they really pushed me into running for this. Mm -hmm. And they, they believe in, in a bit bigger and better Anchorage. And so they're, they're my biggest group of supporters. But, you know, I, I'm, I really feel lucky to live in this town. It is really a great place to live. And I chose to live here because the opportunities are, are terrific. And I remember a conversation I had with a buddy of mine who was trying to make a decision whether to live here or not. And I, I, I remember the conversation distinctly and I told him, you know, it means something to live here. Well, it still means something to live here. And because it means something to live here, we each have an opportunity to contribute to a better place. Mayoral candidate Ethan Berkowitz, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me.